Hello everyone, you may have noticed my HP Prime G2 unboxing video. It's been almost a full year since I shot that footage and I've been using my HP Prime heavily during math class ever since. This video summarizes a highly detailed review I wrote, which you can read by visiting hpmuseum.org. Link will be in the description. Some of the questions I'll be covering are, how has it held up during that time? Are the materials weak? Are the specifications up to par with my workload? Does it have the software support to back the internals? How does it compare to similar calculators like the TI Inspire and the Casio Classpad? Is it good enough to make me switch from my TI-84 Plus CE? For each big topic I cover, I'll be giving it a letter grade from A Plus being the best and F being unacceptable. Let's start on the outside and work our way in, starting with the build quality. The HP Prime G2 looks nearly identical to its predecessor, differentiated only by the tiny G2 logo on the back. It's slightly wider than the TI calculators, but a bit shorter too, while staying just as thin as an Inspire CX. How's my calculator held up during the last several months? It still runs like new, as it should. However, it doesn't look like it's only a year old since the back plastic is not very scratch resistant. I've been keeping this calculator in my bag next to my glasses case. The case is like a capsule and has a glossy smooth finish. That's nothing compared to the zipper pocket I've been keeping my TI-84 Plus CE in for 4 years, and it doesn't look much worse. On the other hand, the HP Prime's metal plate has absolutely no scratches and I kind of wish the whole calculator had been made out of it. Lastly, fingerprints. They actually weren't an issue in the places I thought they would. The screen and the glossy bar on the slide case wipe off very easily. I did apply a tempered glass screen protector to my calculator so I don't know if the actual screen is this easy to clean. The place where the fingerprints are difficult to remove is the glossy bar under the screen where the buttons are. They don't come off easy and it's quite tedious to go in between each button. Overall, I give the HP Prime an A for build quality. It feels durable and the rubber feet and metal plate are very nice. I kind of wish it was more scratch resistant, but you can keep it scratch free if you store it in a fabric case. Enough about the outside of the calculator, let's get to the best part, the internals. The HP Prime G2 has a 32-bit Cortex slash ARM V7 CPU clocked at 528 MHz. For comparison, the Inspire CX2 has a 32-bit ARM 9 slash ARM V5 CPU clocked at 396 MHz, and the TI-84 Plus CE has an abysmal 8-bit EZ80 CPU clocked at only 48 MHz. The Prime also has 256 megabytes of RAM and 512 megabytes of NAND flash, while the Inspire CX2 has 64 megabytes of RAM and 128 megabytes of flash, and the TI-84 Plus CE has a mere 256 kilobytes of RAM and 4 megabytes of flash. The fantastic specifications of the HP Prime provides incredible speed, allowing it to do operations insanely quickly. Just watch me benchmark this summation equation on my HP Prime in my TI-84 Plus CE. As you can see, the HP Prime was nearly instant while the CE took 10 seconds to calculate it. This speed, along with its very accurate capacitive multi-touchscreen, allows it to do things like scroll through the intuitive GUI, zoom in and out of your plotted graphs, or rotate 3D shapes without any lag. This makes the HP Prime score an easy A+, for the internals and speed. Unfortunately, what doesn't get an A+, is the screen itself. Let's start with the good things about the screen. The large 3.5 LCD multi-touchscreen is a joy to have on this calculator. It can display millions of colors more than the other calculators, albeit with only acceptable color calibration. Fortunately, unlike many other touchscreen calculators, the HP Prime has a capacitive touchscreen, like the one used in your smartphone, rather than resistive touchscreens. I go into detail why this is important in my written review. Unfortunately, the display's pros in there. It still has the same resolution of 320 by 240 found on the TI-84 Plus CE and the Inspire calculators, and it doesn't have a great dithering effect applied to the text. It also doesn't have a very good viewing angles when you're looking at it like you normally would from a desk. You need to be nearly right above the screen to see it clearly and make out any contrast. This is because for some unknown reason, someone at HP decided to ignore the developers and instead installed every LCD upside down. It's a real shame because when you turn the calculator upside down, the viewing angles become quite decent. Although I'm giving the LCD quality a C+, I have to reiterate, having a touchscreen rather than just buttons or a trackpad is super nice. I'd like to cover the battery now. It's by far the biggest rechargeable battery I've seen in any calculator. It comes pre-installed with a 2000 mAh battery that can last you over 24 hours of non-stop use. 
For comparison, the Inspire and the TI-84 Plus CE come equipped with a 1200mAh battery and last several hours less. You can even order a slightly bigger 2500mAh battery to upgrade it since it's compatible with Samsung Galaxy S3 batteries. If you're a normal human being, you probably don't use your calculator non-stop. UHB integrated a coma feature that basically shuts down the calculator completely. This allows the battery to last for months on a single charge. This feature automatically activates after 3 days, but you can activate it yourself by pressing and holding shift, then press on. HP gets an easy A plus for this, I rarely have to worry about charging the HP Prime, and having the option to upgrade the battery is fantastic. How about the keypad? Personally, I think this is the best keypad I've felt on any calculator. It's more firm, clicky, and has less travel than a TI-84 Plus CE, but isn't nearly as loud as an Inspire. The key map layout takes a while to get used to, especially when you've strictly been using a TI-84 Plus CE for 4 years. After using this for a few months, I've grown accustomed to the layout and can type in calculations fairly quickly. It also has copy and paste functions which are incredibly useful to have, and its only con is that there's no undo function. Nevertheless, it's a great keyboard and deserves a solid A. Now we're getting into the software of the calculator and oh boy is it a roller coaster of pros and cons. I know I bash the LCD pretty hard, but the software does give it one pro I have not seen on any other calculator. Dark mode. That's right, this calculator has a system-wide dark theme. This is super nice for students who stay up late at night. There's even an option to adjust the system color to a light orange which simulates the night shift feature on your smartphone. Well done HP, you get an A for night support. Let's focus on the home screen where you do your calculations. 95% of the time it's a fantastic environment. The computer algebra system is perfect for all the calculations I've needed to perform so far in calculus and physics. One issue is the calculator's picky about implied multiplication, an issue not present on the Inspire or the TI-84 Plus CE, and it doesn't always throw accurate or helpful errors when you mess something up. For example, I cannot do 5e to the 4th because the calculator thinks there's an invalid exponent, when in fact, that's not the issue at all. If I do 5 times e to the 4th, it works perfectly fine. The implied multiplication stopped being an issue for me a while ago because I just started using the multiplication symbol all the time. However, the errors need to be more accurate and descriptive to be much help. Therefore, I believe it gets an A- for general use and C- for error descriptions. Let's backtrack. Remember when I said the HP Prime has a lot of storage? Well, HP decided to utilize some of that space for features such as storing the entire Unicode table in a menu, but more importantly, it contains the help menu that appears when you press the help key. It's incredibly useful much better than the help menu on the TI-84 Plus CE and Inspire. It explains in detail how a function, command, screen, or just about anything on the calculator works. It even contains examples if you want to try out a working example of that command, and includes a list of similar commands. A plus for onboard help. Very nice. What really saves the home screen score is all the optimization HP did to enhance your experience. It smoothly integrates the touchscreen so you can double tap calculations in your history to bring them directly to the entry line, drag on the entry line to select part of an equation, and horizontally scroll across equations slash answers that don't fit on the screen. I'm looking at you, TI-84 plus CE. You can tap on the result in your history, then if you press the fraction slash decimal toggle button, you can change that in individual result. A very neat feature is the show button. If you have a long and complex calculation in your history, you can just tap the soft key that says show and it will focus on just that entry. If you tap on the top right corner, you can quickly change from degrees to radians and vice versa. And in one button, there's a menu for all the most common math functions. If that function isn't there, you can quickly find it by clicking on the toolbox button and typing in the name of the function you want. That's not always necessary though, since the whole system is text-based rather than token-based. You can just type out the command you want with the alpha keys. Overall, I think the home screen gets an A. It just needs an undo key and chained history at its be the ideal environment. Next, I'd like the covered graphing. It really is a breeze. You can calculate and edit all sorts of functions either from the symbol screen or directly from the graph screen. You can even sketch a rough graph with your finger, then fine tune it with the transform function. Just like other calculators, the HP Prime can graph polar, parametric, sequential, and 3D equations. The only missing feature is a parametric 3D grapher. I'll briefly mention some of the other built-in apps. There's a several solver apps, a statistic app, financial solver app, an in-depth spreadsheet app, and a very powerful geometry app which can graph dozens of functions, shapes, lines, and transformations. Some apps are easier to learn to use than others, 
but it's all possible thanks to the amazing help button. The graphing gets an A plus for the environment and an A for graphing features, but only needs a 3D pair magic grapher to bump it to an A plus. Now how about programming options? Well, there's not nearly as many as I'd hoped there'd be. The support for Python is very limited currently, however with each software update it has been getting better and better. The best language on here is the Prime Programming Language, or PPL for short. For those familiar with TI calculators, PPL is kinda like TI's built-in language called TI Basic, however PPL is better in so many ways. I've just started using it, but I've been able to create programs I could only dream of making in TI Basic at incredible speed. Let's compare a program I made called JPL in three languages. First TI Basic, next PPL, and finally Easy AD Assembly. You can see that my PPL and assembly versions are both far better than my TI Basic one. And while I program my assembly version with better graphics, I have no doubt that PPL can handle much more complex graphics with better speed. Although PPL is great, I have to give the HP Prime a C for programming variety options. After using PPL for a while, I have noticed that it does sometimes crash the calculator rather than the calculator catching the error and aborting the program. I'll have to give PPL a B for stability. I'd give it lower if not for its incredible ability to recover from a crash quite well. The program that crashed is not deleted, and all your history and settings are kept. If anything does go majorly wrong, HP provides an on-calculator backup feature that allows you to save and restore your calculator's current state at any time. I'd like to add that HP has two ways for you to reset the calculator manually. One way is by pressing the on and send button at the same time, the other is by pressing the button well hidden in the back of the calculator. HP definitely gets an A plus for recovery options. On to a different topic, connectivity. The HP Prime comes with a single micro USB port, unlike TI's calculators which have mini USB. To use the calculator with your computer, you need to install the HP connectivity kit. This isn't unusual, TI requires you to install TI Connect CE to interact with their calculators, however it would have been nice if HP had taken after Casio's approach, where the calculator just acts like a mass storage device if you just want to look at the contents. With how simple the user interface is, it's not a big complaint. I go into detail about HP Connect's unique features in my written review, my overall rating for it is an A. I'm sure many of you are waiting for the big catch. Performance normally comes with a huge price, right? In this case, price is not the catch. When I got my HP Prime G2 back in February of 2019, it actually wasn't available for sale in the US yet. But even after importing mine from the Netherlands and paying the shipping costs, the total price is only $10 more than a full price T-84 plus CE and $25 less than a full price Inspire CX Cast coming in at $160. Now that it's available in the US, you can get it on Best Buy and other vendors for around $150. Even though that's still expensive, compared to the specs list I provided earlier, it's still much better value than TI calculators. A plus for value. What if you don't want to fork out $150 just to try out the calculator? Well, there's actually an unrestricted emulator that costs about $25 for iOS and $20 for Android, but completely free for Windows and Mac. Compared to TI, who only offers a computer emulator that costs at minimum $85, and Casio, who only provides a computer emulator that costs $25, the HP Prime emulator isn't a bad deal. A plus for first party emulator support. There's a couple of smaller things I wasn't planning on adding to this review, but they stood out enough that I decided to include them anyways. First, if you buy your HP Prime G2 in Europe, don't expect a charging block to come with your calculator. Although most people already have a compatible charging block, you may need to order your own. Any wall adapter to USB-A that's at least 5 volts and 1 amp will work. Second, the quality of the cables are good. Like, really good. They're nice and thick, and all come with an electromagnetic interference reducer. Whenever I need to troubleshoot a device through micro USB, these cables have never let me down. Third, I was stunned at how much better the rubber feet on the HP Prime are compared to my TI-84 Plus CE. They are miles better, allowing it to stick to extremely steep surfaces. Lastly, I'd like to cover the internal clock. I'm used to my TI-84 Plus CE's clock, which drifts several minutes in the span of a few hours and consistently gets reset back to the default time. I'm very happy to report that I've not needed to update my HP Prime's clock since I first set it up nearly a year ago. I didn't realize how much I valued having an accurate clock on the right of my calculator for tests and making sure I don't stay up too late doing homework. Not only is it accurate, if it ever does drift, it automatically syncs itself with your computer's time whenever you connect it. HP Prime's clock is overall fantastic and I've been very pleased with it. A plus for that HP. 
In summary, I truly believe the HP Prime G2 is a great calculator with the potential to be the perfect alternative of an Inspire. Not only did it score an A overall, it has unmatched hardware performance and reasonable value. However, I believe the software supported a bit lacking for it to take advantage of the superior specifications. To be fair, the Inspire lineup has a 6 year head start and the Casio Classpad lineup has over a decade head start on the softer features than the HP Prime. Hopefully the HP team can include some of the key features missing from the HP Prime soon. Until then, could you buy this calculator? I'd say if you're a high school or college student looking for the fastest calculator on the market, then you'll be very happy with this calculator. If you're worried about some of the missing features I mentioned, and you're willing to fork over the extra money, then I think you'll be satisfied with either an Inspire CX Class 2 or the Casio Classpad FX CG500. As for me, I'll be leaving my TI-84 Plus CE behind and switching to the HP Prime G2. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please read my written review. It contains tons of information I wasn't able to cover in this video. If it doesn't answer your question, I'll be happy to answer you in the comments. Have a good day.